In this video, I'm going to show you how to save any image with just one change in Lightroom. If you want to follow along, feel free to download this profile from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. So how can we save this underexposed raw file? The answer is simple. We are using the Adobe Adaptive Profile. For that, head into the basic panel, then open up the profile dropdown menu. And here, all we need to do is click on Adaptive Color. Instantly, you can see we have recovered all the vital details from the super unexposed areas of this image that were previously just pure black. Plus, the highlights aren't overexposed, so that means we also have all the needed details in the sky right here in the center. You can also see this in the histogram. There might be a little tiny bit of clipping in the darkest parts of the image, but other than that, the histogram looks perfect. And all of that with just one click. I didn't change anything else. What you can do as well is to change the amount this profile will be applied on your image. So dialing it down to zero will basically reset it while bringing it up to 100 will just further adjust the image. But you can see at this point it's way too bright. So I'm going with the default amount here, which is looking really, really good. One thing you will notice, of course, we have heavily recovered the shadows. That means we are going to end up with a bit of noise in those darker areas, which we need to fix at that point. So before we continue with the basic adjustments, let's head out of the basic panel. Go ahead, open up the details panel and make sure to check denoise to get rid of the noise. Here you just need to be careful. Again, let's zoom in a bit. Due to the AI denoise, the forest in the back looks a little bit strange with those kind of weird looking waves in it. I'm going to dial it down a bit, bringing back some noise, but also reducing the weirdness of the background. So I think that's looking pretty good. All right. So let's compare to before real quick. And of course, you can see a huge difference with much more details to look at. Of course, we can do much, much more to this image. So let's continue. Let's open up the basic panel. And I want to kind of keep this image on the darker side, making it look a little more dramatic. I'm going to bring down the exposure for that, making everything just a bit darker this way. I'm also going to pull down the highlights a little further because I want to have a little more detail in the brightest parts of the sky. And let me increase the shadows because I want to restore a little more details from the darkest parts. Also, I'm going to bring up the blacks for the same effect. Another benefit of raising the blacks is we will create a softer looking image by reducing the contrast this way, which I think looks good for a scene like this because I want to add a little bit of glow later on. Then finally, I do think we could use a bit more contrast looking at the brighter areas. So I'm going to bring up the whites to achieve that. Nice. Then let me work on the white balance for a moment. I do think I want this shot to be even colder than it is right now. So I'm going to bring down the temperature. This will just help make the shot look a bit more dramatic, I think. And let me bring down the tint as well. All right, that's looking good so far. What I want to do next is to add a bit of texture, giving this shot more sharpness. Then I want to start working on some kind of autumn glow effect, which I want to lay on top of everything. So let me bring down the clarity. This will help make everything softer. And for the same effect, I'm going to bring down the dehaze. Keep in mind, reducing the dehaze like this will also make the image brighter, but that's looking good so far. Okay, I'm not going to touch the vibrance or saturation slider. I want this image to be rather desaturated. I'm going to change it later on in the color mixer. For now, what I want to do next is to apply some local adjustments through masking. So let's open up the masking panel. And I want to start working on the sky first. Let me use a simple linear gradient with which I'm going to target pretty much the top part like this. And I just want to make it darker, kind of creating some vignetting up in here. I'm going to pull down the exposure for that. And I'm also going to pull down the blacks, making it even darker. All right, nice. I'm going to create another linear gradient right away. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller than the previous one, but again, just for the top part of the sky. And again, I want to make this area darker. So I'm going to pull down the exposure by stacking these two linear gradients on top of each other. We just get a more natural looking result. So that's looking great. 
not only do I want to make the top part of the sky darker, I also want to add some very heavy light effect over the brightest part in the center. I'm going to do this with a radial gradient. Let's make it nice and big like this. I'm trying to kind of fit the shape of this bright spot. So something like this, I'm making sure to place it right behind the subject like that. Now, I want to make this area brighter, but if you make it brighter like this, we would affect the rock in the foreground, which kind of doesn't make sense because it lies in the shadows. So I'm going to subtract a radial gradient and I'm just taking out a little bit from that rock in the foreground. I do want to keep a bit in here to create some kind of light spill effect. So let's try it like this. And for the light effect, I'm going to bring up the blacks. All right, that's looking better. I'm also going to bring down the dehaze, which will help with that light spill effect. So let me pull down the dehaze. That's looking much better. I still think it's a bit too dark. So what I'm going to do next is to bring up the exposure, making it a whole lot brighter. Okay, at this point you can see the light is a bit too cold. It should be warmer. So what we can do for that is to bring up the temperature, just introducing some more warmth to that bright spot. All right, that's looking nice. I want to further work on this glow effect. I'm going to use another radial gradient. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And again, I'm placing it between those two trees. And again, I'm making sure to overlap the rock in the foreground. Let's maybe make it a bit bigger. Okay. Okay, I think that should be fine. Again, I'm bringing up the blacks and I'm bringing down the dehaze. Let's drop the dehaze quite a lot. I really love this glow effect this has on this rock. I do think we can make it brighter by increasing the exposure one more time. This way we might end up with a little bit of clipping in the highlights. I don't think it's a big deal. I actually think it looks better this way. Again, uh, the color is a bit lacking in this area, so I'm going to pull up the temperature just to get a little more warmth in here. Perfect. Of course, since we have applied this brighter look in the sky, we also need to keep the reflection in the water in mind. So let me use another radial gradient, and I'm go just going to roughly target the reflection in the foreground like this. Again, let me subtract a linear gradient here, taking out that rock. Okay. And I am going to start by bringing up the exposure, making this reflection brighter. Then let me bring up the blacks. And let me also pull down the dehaze. Okay, something like this looks good. Now the only thing missing is the color, so I'm going to bring up the temperature to fix that. All right, that's looking great. Then let's further work on the foreground. I'm going to use a linear gradient covering pretty much everything right here in the front of the camera. And I want to just pump up the clarity a bit, making the foreground look more interesting this way. All right. At the same time, I'm using another linear gradient for the very near foreground, which again, I just want to make darker by bringing down the exposure. All right, and this will help pull the viewer's eye more towards the center by creating this custom vignetting effect. Then let me create another radial gradient. I'm going to cover this patch of texture right here, which you can spot through the water surface. I want to make it a little more visible, so I'm going to pull up the texture and I'm going to bring up the clarity as well, just to get out more detail right here. All right, then I want to use an object selection mask. I'm going to activate the rectangle select mode. And with that out of the way, I'm going to draw a rectangle around that rock in the center. Because I want to make it just a little bit brighter and therefore I'm going to bring up the whites. Really don't want to overdo it, but I want to have more details in here, so that should be fine. And finally, one thing that will really change this image is to add some kind of light hitting the mountains in the back. It just makes everything look a bit more natural with the glow on top. So let us create a select landscape mask. In here, we want to choose mountains and then click on create mask. Of course, we need to further modify this mask. First off, let's subtract another objects mask and draw a rectangle around that rock in the center. Then we need to subtract a brush and I'm just going to brush over the center right here. We really don't want to change the trees. 
just the mountains. Okay, but I don't want to affect all of these mountains the same. Let me click on those three dots, choose intersect mask width and choose radial gradient. Now I'm going to create a radial gradient just over the center part. Now these areas now selected by this radial gradient are the areas that are getting hit by the light from the back we have created. So it makes sense to make these areas brighter. What I'm going to do for that is to bring down the dehaze. I'm also going to bring up the clarity just to add a little more structure in there. And then let me pull up the blacks to create this nice looking light effect. Again, the color isn't fitting for the rest of the sky. So I'm going to bring up the temperature to align the colors. Let's pull them up pretty much all the way. All right, and that's looking really, really good. I think that's it for the masking adjustments. Let me turn off all the masks so we can see the difference from before with our base image to after. Looking much, much better. Now that we're done with the masking adjustments, what we're going to do next is the color grading. And we're going to start in the color mixer for that. I want to work on the hue for a moment because there are a few color tones I really don't like in this image. I'm going to bring down the yellow hue just a little bit, turning all the yellow tones more into an orange color tone. And I'm also going to bring down the green hue just to make those areas a little bit warmer. Okay. Now for the saturation. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I want this shot to look rather desaturated. And I'm going to pull down the blues for that. I'm going to heavily reduce them. I'm going to also heavily reduce the aqua color tones. I think something like this looks pretty nice. I'm going to bring down the green tones a little bit. And I'm going to bring down yellow. Now I don't want to bring down all the color tones. Let me bring up the orange tones just a little bit to get a bit of a balance going on. This doesn't do much, but I think it helps. At this point, we are kind of lacking a little bit too much color, but don't worry. What we can, what we can do is to go into the color grading panel for some split toning. Here I'm using the highlights and the mid tones to bring back warmth and color to the image. So let's start with the highlights, set up the hue to a warm color tone, of our, of our liking. So somewhere here in the yellow range. And then I'm going to bring up the saturation, introducing this yellow golden light in the background. Beautiful. Then let's go into the midtones. Again, I'm setting up the hue with a warm color tone. Let's go with an orange tone like this. And again, I'm going to bring up the saturation, introducing color. Now for some color contrast, I'm going to use the shadows. And here I'm going to choose a cold color tone for the color contrast. So let's go with something like that and bring up the saturation just a little bit. I don't want to overdo it with the shadows, but that is looking super, super good. Now, the only thing left to do with the color grading is happening down there in the calibration panel. As always for my images, I like to bring down the blue brommer hue. This will just shift the colors in a very nice, pleasing way, in my opinion. And I'm going to bring up the saturation a bit. All right, and that's pretty much it. Now all that's left to do is the sharpening in the details panel, open it up and let's bring down the radius. Let's increase the details, hold on the all key while adjusting the masking slider so we can target specific areas of the image and sharpen them like this. And then I'm going to bring up the amount of sharpening and we are done editing this image. So I hope you did enjoy this video. I hope the adaptive profile trick recovering underexposed images was helpful. Again, sorry for the clickbait. It's just something I have to do in order for my videos to get pushed by YouTube. So don't blame me, blame YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and see you all next time.